I am Dr. Alex, Associate Professor in the Department of Bioinformatics and today I would like to give you a brief introduction to the topic of HIV compartmentalization. Extensive viral diversity is a key feature of HIV infection. At the population level, two types of HIV, namely HIV 1 and 2, have been identified. Multiple subtypes may also be present that may differ by as much as 35% in their nucleotide sequences. Within an individual, HIV exists as a population of related yet distinct viral variants which are termed as viral quasi-species. Quasi-species denotes a group of viruses related by similar mutation or mutations competing within a highly mutagenic environment. These viral variants permit rapid adaptive responses to a wide variety of selection pressures including immunologic selection, antiviral therapy, cellular microenvironment, thereby contributing to viral fitness and disease progression. Moreover, these seemingly minor viral variations or mutations may significantly alter key virologic properties such as cellular tropism, co-receptor utilization, cytopathicity, syncytium formation, transcriptional activation, replicative fitness, viral transmission and neutralization properties. Several of these phenotypic differences have been attributed to the outer enveloped glycoprotein, namely the trimeric GP120. For instance, it is well established and understood that HIV gains entry into target cells by forming a complex consisting of GP120, the CD4 receptor and the members of the chemokine co-receptor family. A variety of chemokine receptors serve as HIV entry cofactors with CCR5 and CXCR4 serving as the major co-receptors for macrophage tropic and T-cell tropic HIV isolates respectively. Very interestingly, HIV is also capable of infecting several CD4 negative cell types which implies that alternative viral entry strategies may be utilized. Numerous studies have reported an association between viral diversity and HIV disease progression. There are some notable observations in this regard. For instance, early studies reported that diversity of the envelope genes increased with time since infection, although subsequent studies comparing HIV individuals at varying stages of disease progression demonstrated a far more complex interaction between the virus and host selective pressures. It has also been reported that slow disease progress has typically developed more envelope quasi-species diversity over time, while rapid progressors show little or no change in diversity over time. Similarly, among patients who were followed for about 3 to 12 years, the rate of envelope gene diversity was not constant but rather changed according to the rate of CD4 positive T cell decline. Now, such studies highlight the importance of evaluating HIV diversity in relation to disease progression and to immunologic decline. Apart from the envelope, there are other additional regions of the HIV genome which may also influ influence viral fitness and disease progression. For example, evidence from several retroviruses convincingly demonstrates that long terminal repeat LTR serves as a determinant of cellular tropism, disease specificity and disease progression. During the life cycle of HIV, the transcriptional machinery within the host cell nucleus regulates gene expression and is largely dependent on the activation state of the host cell. Immune activation is a strong predictor of HIV disease progression and a major stimulus for viral replication at the cellular level. Thus, it should not surprise us that LTR variation influences replication kinetics and transmission. Significant diversity within the LTR has also been documented and it results in divergent pathways of transcriptional regulation. In one study, there was found an association between LTR diversity and disease progression, although this has not been reported in other studies. Now coming to the crux of the problem, while primary and laboratory HIV strains show a wide variety of cellular tropism, cytopathic effect and co-receptor utilization, very little is known about the properties of viral variants present in distinct anatomical locations and tissue types in vivo. Examination of HIV sequences collected at autopsy has been invaluable in demonstrating that viral variability is not evenly distributed throughout the body and that tissue specific viral variants exist within one infected individual. It has also been observed that the envelope gene length varied significantly among different organs from an individual. Coming to the importance of viral compartmentalization, we understand that distinct and unique nucleotide sequences have been observed within various organs and bodily fluids which are collected simultaneously from the same individual that is at autopsy. 
In a classic review in 2012 on HIV compartmentalization as a clinically important phenomenon by Jason Blackard from the University of Cincinnati College of Medicine, he recounts a study by Van Wout et al. who similarly reported that tissue-specific viral variants were present in brain, lungs, and, and testes. Conflicting resistance mutation patterns have also been reported in various tissues at the time of autopsy. Thus, it is clear that viral sequences in the periphery or one particular cell type or tissue are not always representative of viral sequences in a distinct cell type or tissue. Now, trying to define viral compartmentalization, we understand that viral compartments are characterized by a restriction of viral gene flow between cells or tissues. As we see in the table here, analysis of quasi-species diversity has shown that multiple cell types, tissues or organs may support distinct HIV populations within the same individual. Viral sequence divergence suggests HIV compartmentalization may occur in these cell types, tissues, or organs. They include peripheral blood mononuclear cells or leukocytes, brain or cerebrospinal fluid, semen, cervical vaginal lavage, intestine, gut associated lymphoid tissue or feces, epidermal Langerhans cells, kidney, breast milk, liver, lung, saliva, bone marrow, and the placenta. To conclude this introduction, the viral characteristics necessary for efficient HIV transmission and disease progression are poorly understood. Yet such information is absolutely critical for the design of effective preventative and therapeutic strategies to combat the HIV virus. Interestingly, after cessation of the ART, the antiretroviral therapy, HIV replication may not always rebound from viruses present in the PBMCs or lymph nodes, rather viruses can rebound from elsewhere within the body thereby highlighting the clinical significance of exploring HIV compartmentalization, replication, and the generation of viral diversity throughout the body. It is also to be noted that before additional therapeutic strategies can be developed to eliminate all possible sources of HIV replication within an infected individual, much consideration must be given to the identification and characterization of the viruses residing within a particular cell type, tissue, or the organ. HIV compartmentalization strongly suggests that not all variants of HIV present within an individual are equally capable of infecting a given target cell or tissue and that cell or tissue specific adaptation of a particular HIV variant is required for the efficient replication within a given micro environment that is a cell type. Numerous factors may influence HIV compartmentalization. Some of them are altered requirements for target cell entry like the receptor contact residues, envelope length and the number of potential end linked glycosylation sites, decreased and or localized immune selective pressures like in CNS, cell type specific differences in replication or gene expression as in cytokine or chemokine or transcript factors, local concentration of the antiviral drugs or drug resistance, physical isolation of a particular tissue or cell type, selective migration of susceptible cells, distinct determinants of virulence in different target cells, co-infections as in tuberculosis, and the founder effect, which is the loss of genetic variation which occurs when a new population established by a very small number of individuals from a larger population. The finding of distinct viral populations within a given cell or tissue could also complicate future therapeutic options if such variants differ in their response to HIV specific medications, although this hypothesis has not been fully explored till now. In contrast, the identification and identification of distinct subpopulations of viruses could suggest novel strategies to impair the ability of the viruses to adapt to and to infect a given specific cell type or tissue. Similarly, identification of target, targeted viral regions and the selective pressures that shape viral transmission and diversity are also required for the rational design of vaccines that target these specific viral features and reduce infection and dissemination. I'm very grateful to Dr. Jason Blackard of the University of Cincinnati College of Medicine and the Harvard Medical School, who was with us a few months back to share with us insights into this complex yet fascinating phenomenon of HIV compartmentalization and all our colleagues at the YRG Care who facilitated that meeting. Thank you for listening. In the next meeting, we would go inside the depths of HIV compartmentalization. Thank you.